Well, they, they added proximity assist and they removed the hover mode, um, which means mm. things basically now just they, the the other half of it, which is the which is the uh, the thruster power things, is is not in yet. And this is why I wanted I, I was I wanted to get into a discussion with you a little bit about like did we do a blast cast and I'm not sure I I have to think of the details. But ba oh yeah, also in personal inventory and and mining in caves as well. Um, oh, hand okay. mining. So there's like the handheld mining. Yeah, no mining. Yeah. So so basically, what I want to talk about, and I thought about doing a show about, was you've got an inherent systemic problem. Okay, like a a fully a, a ship a cargo ship needs to have enough thruster power to VTOL to take off from the ground, but. If the with well, the power requirements when it's unladen would almost depending upon how powerful it is uh, could could make fighters outperform a uh, top fighter but cargo ships outperform fighters if you know if you're doing yes, it yes if you're doing but... it by physics but this is why I, I thought about the classification of thrusters like like think of it like gearing um you have the you have the uh, the the this called it the industrial thrusters. Industrial thrusters and industrial engines do not have afterburner. They do not have boost. They have a slower ramp up, longer sustainability, higher endurance. They require less fuel, um, and they but they 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 have a, a greater ramp up. So changing directions, changing speeds is slower than say like the other end of it, which might be racing, which burns more fuel, has higher afterburner, has has uh, has less endurance. Right, because it's made to like for quick acceleration, or or, or 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 you know you can do very quick afterburners, but it also you, you burn more fuel and stuff like that. So you have these these extreme ends of the spectrum, right? And this keeps the this makes that a lot, a lot big. My ships can't have very powerful thrusters in order to hold their VTOL. Uh, they're also not they're set set up in a way that they're not. Um, uh, oh, by the landing pad too, by the way. Okay. Uh, they're set up in such <coughs> well, a way. That, yeah. Anyway, that was my thinking. Mm -hmm. Rough idea. There, there's two ways to go about it. There's the the game way and the real way. And the real way is that system just wouldn't work. Big ships would just have bigger thrusters. Just period. That, that. Um, but you can also look at it as uh, like a space versus ground kind of thing. Yeah. Um, because realistically, um, if well, I look, you, I look at these thrusters as, as mechanical devices, not just the way that we view thrusters, like, because they're clearly, they're not they're... using a lot of fuel. I mean, the same way that like just a raw rocket Whoop. engine would, you know, the star they're system... still using a fuel. True. Like, true. They're, but they're still a type of chemical rocket. True. They but, but are a hyper efficient. Well, or, or what, or whatever it is. But the point is that they're still, they're still, um, whatever they're doing is not just a pure explosion. It's not just a pure burning of everything up and throwing it out the thruster. It, it's it's different than that. So I'm thinking that with mechanical I, mechanical spool up and stuff like that. That there's there's a difference. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be an ass. Well, I mean I always I mean, mean to be an ass, but you know. I I don't see them going that far as thrusters, because uh, I mean if if you if you break it down into pure physics and space travel concepts there's only one way of space flight and that's propulsion you have to have a propulsion device the easiest way is to you know vent gases out of one end so you have you know the equal opposite reaction um that's the only way we know of for space travel unless you break every single law of physics so there's different types of thrusters like ion thrusters for example they are really really weak in modern day you know uh design and, and stuff um because you're you're charging ions i'm gonna go mark first so we can buy some hand mining equipment uh, hey, oh don't sure. have hand mining equipment i i have no idea <laughs> i have no idea either gosh uh, but, i don't but ion um, engines t tend to be really efficient um they take a lot more energy to use but they use very little propulsion um, because you're you're charging very very small particles and those particles are accelerating out of the engine, which yeah. generates thrust. But I, you need a lot of them, so you don't get a whole lot of the actual power. So you can extrapolate extrapolate or whatever. Person probably had mining uh, all of that mining. stuff and just say they're a highly efficient engine. Um, that still means they need some type of power source or fuel source, and that's already modeled in the game. So, 
the two ways you can look at it is you can just say it's a video game and you basically just make everything balanced and you don't worry about it. Or you go two, which is what Star Citizen has always appeared to try doing and making it somewhat realistic. So a somewhat realistic ship, be it, let's say it's never, ever, ever going to land in atmo- or in a gravity field or atmosphere or something, right? Well, then the the logic of it needs a thrust-to-weight ratio equal or greater than its mass doesn't apply because it has infinite amount of time to accelerate because it doesn't have any forces acting on it. Basically, it's zero forces. So it doesn't need to have 100 billion newtons of thrust because even if it has 100 billion tons, as long as it has enough thrust, it'll still accelerate. It'll accelerate incredibly, incredibly slow, but it'll still do it. So if you have a certain threshold, because uh, I'm going to look at Eve here or something, you have a certain threshold of your top speed or recommended safe speed, whatever you want to do it, because there's no technically no top speed in space. Um, you you have to reach that whatever speed, then you can quantum. And then the quantum is, you know, you're basically dropping into warp. You know, the, you're removing physics from the equation because it simplifies games. Um, but then if you have the, oh, well, it's going to be laying on planets. You can't get around the fact that they will have more power. Just period. The, the only way you can get around it, um, like game-wise, is the fact that the engines are not designed for rapid movement. The ship is not designed for rapid movement. The ship is capable of high acceleration, but it's not designed for it. The high acceleration thing is because it needs to counteract a cargo weight. So another downside to Star Citizen, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention it every single time, the, the weight balance. If you have a cargo ship and it loads cargo exclusively in the back like a pickup truck, well, that's fine for a pickup truck because it has four wheels, maybe six wheels, um, and it just rides in the suspension. The weight kind of bounces itself out a little bit. Uh, and then you just go about your merry way. Obviously, if you overload it, you know, the front end lifts off the ground. It doesn't work. A spaceship can't do that because it's using thrusters. The thrusters have to balance through the weight, the center of weight. So you, the, the way to counteract this realistically is you'd have highs and lows. So you would have to have thrusters or engines on the entire ship or at least in key areas. And they'd have to have certain ramp up times. So you'd have to have, like maybe if it's, if it's exclusively rear loading, it probably has more powerful thrusters in the back to counter all the extra weight you put in. So the thrusters at the back, let's just say they use 100% of their power. Well, the ones in the front don't have as much weight on them. So they don't need 100% power. And in fact, if you gave them 100% power in a real physics game, you'd flip over because you were overpowering because you need to you need to balance your thrust um, output with your center of mass. Right. So you could have these rear thrusters be 100%, uh, and then the front ones are like 20 or 50 or something, and then that'd be your your veto ability. But that means you can't do anything else as far as maneuvering. Uh, like you could pitch up and down, <clears throat> but by doing so, you're not messing with the rear thrusters. Only the front thrusters are adjusting for your pitch up and down. So you're going to end up with a more sluggish type of approach because you're fully laden. Now you remove all that weight. Well, now you only need like 20% in the front, 20% in the back. So theoretically, you have tons of potential. But realistically, if you went 100%, you might black out or break your neck or something. So ships would realistically have a built-in you know, acceleration cap because it's for safety reasons. And if it's a, especially if it's a civilian ship, think about speed governors on modern cars. You can't really sell a car without, you know, oh, the car can do 200 miles an hour. But odds are either you're paying out the ass or it's governed at like 80 or 90 or something because you don't need to go that fast. There are no roads that allow you to go 200 miles an hour because that's not safe, right? And that's really the only way they can get around doing it, is you'd have limits. And, you know, maybe the limits on a a fighter are, you know, a lot higher. There's more tolerance because it's designed to do that. When the pilot says, hey, I need 100% power, odds are they probably do, but 
you know, then you're going to start hitting like, oh, well, you know, do you have a G safety device on? And, and there's a whole bunch of other things they can use to balance it. And artificially limiting things because of game balances is dumb and it's not going to win them any arguments. Yeah. Well, so. the, uh... <laughs> On my screen, you are super, super late in your firing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're pelting it. That was a freelancer? Or a, a Connie? That was a Connie. It melted way too quickly. Most things do. It barely put up any fight, and you obliterated it. I was good. Actually, I didn't even pull my, that's what's going on. I had my limiter up too high. I, I was, um, I was, uh, I, oops, just threw my view off screen. There we go. Nice. Yeah, good times. There we go. But yeah, that, that's my long-winded and bare-bones explanation of physics. I mean, they either, uh, you know, try and do things at least that semi-resemble a physics-type system, or they don't. There's really no in-between. I mean, you can't make it 100% true to life, I don't think. Not with the game engine that they're building it in. So they need to make it at least close. I get that it's a futuristic space game or whatever, but the unless they're actively promoting some kind of technology that allows them to break physics, then they have to... Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tricky thing. I'm trying to do the, uh, the one my view follows. It just doesn't feel quite right. I should have done head tracking. Anyway, so this just doesn't feel right. Let me switch back. There we Ooh, go. Almost got rammed. <laughs> Good, well, my head's my, my head's tracking weird. Anyway, so um, what I was to say is that. Hmm, uh, jousting. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good times with the sun. Uh, anyway, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, I understand your your perspective on it, but at the same time, I'm like like. I mean, it depends on how the technology developed, right? I mean, that that, that, that really comes down to lore, how, how what kind of how the technology works, which I don't think is firmly established. And uh, I mean, at least at least not firmly detailed. We have some rough ideas. These guns aren't tracking for shit. No, they're basically not. It looks like they're fixed. Yeah, they're not. I mean, they're the the, the, the saying these say the gimbal auto auto, auto gimbals are OP. They're just full of shit. Uh, it doesn't look like they're gimbling at all on my screen. It looks like you're just firing forward every single time. And then yeah. it just exploded out of nowhere. <laughs> so fun. maybe that's a, a multiplayer desync because it looks like they yeah, were just they really need to add the, Yeah, it's just, it's weird. Well, at, least was, at least I made some money on the way there. Anyway, so the bottom line is, is that they need to... Uh, it, it comes down to coming up with a system that balances out these different ship classifications and... I really just don't want to see... Uh, another reason as well, I guess you could say, is it would also kind of reintroduce Jerk back into the mechanics. Uh, by having this different this spool-up uh, variance on the different kinds of thrusters, because thrusters are used to change your, your direction, it would reintroduce Jerk, which has basically been removed for the most part for the smaller fighters. And you have some degree of Jerk at all levels. I think Jerk is important. Uh, you feel it mostly, if anything, on the larger ships. Like you feel, you've, there's jerk on the freelancer. Uh, there is, there is, there is drift. There is back and forth. There's no instant stop and starts. The, mostly, where, where the problem is, is on the fighters, which seem to just have no sense of mass whatsoever. Uh, jerk, yeah, and, is a, and they should. I mean, <clears throat> fighters probably be the least noticeable, just because of the, the yeah. Low but it mass. should at least be noticeable. Yeah, you, you'd still notice it. And, and that's the you thing. You should. Is that, I, I, I guess that's why I like the, the larger ships better. Um, and I'm half paying attention anyway as we're playing. I'm, I'm barely even focusing on it. I'm just, I'm just listening to what you're saying. Like, oh, yeah, I, should, I guess I should fly and shoot some stuff. <laughs> um, you know, actually, I just, I was just sit in thinking, the passenger seat here. I'm just along for the ride. I was just thinking about firing some missiles at and be done with it. But I was just like, oh, I'll just listen to what you're saying and try to concentrate on shooting. But I, I, I do two things at once so terribly. I do two things at once so terribly. You know, like, you don't, you don't want to start playing a game and I get focused. I don't talk. Yeah, you just you just clam up and it's like, hey, Jars, Jars, and you're like, huh, what? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I, but when I'm talking or something or trying to listen to something, I just I just don't play for any game worth of crap, you know. But I really gotta like just, 
And th th the and there, and there's a quandary, right? I mean, there, I mean, I guess, I guess that's your game grumps moment. Like, you know, you just you, you can't have a conversation by any any sort of and, and still play a game worth a damn. No, because um, you're you know, if you're good, you're doing fifty fifty. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, when I sit there play DCS and I can land one wire on a carrier deck, but when I start talking, I'm lucky if I don't smash into the tower. You know, it, it's it's just a whole different animal. It's just weird. It's weird. Um. I, I changed my mind and we're going to go to Hurston because uh, they're a mining community. So I figured if everyone's going to have the mining laser, it's going to be Hurston. That's too logical. That, you, that's that, not you true. know, you're probably right. They probably didn't put it on Hurston because this is CIG. <laughs> they probably put it on some random moon somewhere out in the middle of nowhere that, that, that produces it, cotton slobs. It randomly slobs. spawns on one of the random truck stops. Oh, I don't know. A and um, every time it's bought, it's re-procedurally generated on uh, which truck stop it's for sale again on. So you have to visit every single truck stop. And knowing our luck, it'd be the last one we visit. 